the chapel of Grandview University and the preaching ministry of Luther Memorial Church. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Happy New Year. This is a new year. It's 2021. There is much to be joyful for. This is going to be a good year. And I'm glad that you've chosen to worship with us this weekend on the second Sunday of Christmas. And our call to worship comes from Isaiah 9 that calls us and tells us of the hope that we have. So read responsibly the, the call to worship. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shined. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, we thank you that you are with us and that your son is the Prince of Peace. O oh Lord, in this new year, grant our hearts peace and let us have joy as this new year will bring about new and wonderful opportunities. Now send your spirit upon this service. In Jesus' name, amen.
A reading from John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him and believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Happy New Year. I am so glad it's 2021. There is so much to be excited for. There's optimism around. This is going to be a good year. We're going to recover from this year. We still have a way to go, but we're, we're going in the right direction. And as I look ahead to this year and all the possibility of this year, I can't help but still remember this last year. And this last Christmas was not the Christmas that any of us really wanted. A lot of us were isolated. And as I was thinking about this Christmas, away from family and, and my relatives, I thought of past Christmases with my cousins and my aunts and uncles. And I have the best cousins. I have the best aunts and uncles. I have the best grandparents. I'm sad that three of them um, have passed away and only one is living. Um, so I miss them. And as I was thinking about all my family and my, my grandparents, I was thinking about how my grandpa and grandma met. It's on my mom's side. And they met in California. They grew up in California. They, they went to the same high school. So they knew each other. They dated each other. And then at some point, my, my grandma's parents transferred to Ohio. And so she moved with them to Ohio. And she was there. She was there for some time. And she started dating someone, and she got engaged. And right around that time, my grandpa, who was living in a state in the Midwest as well, he heard about the engagement. He got in his car. He drove to my grandma. And he made a case, standing in front of her. He professed his love for her. And standing in front of her, she decided to marry him. And they started on an adventure and built a whole life together. Now, I share this with you because in the prologue of John, it begins by telling about a relationship and a relationship between God the Father and Jesus the Word and how this relationship creates life. Listen again to how John 1 begins. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now, I'm going to stop there for a second because my Greek teacher, Robert Gundry, I remember he told me this, and he said this. He said, when it says, and the word was with God, he goes, no, 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 you're not getting the Greek. The idea is the word is face to face with God the Father. That Jesus the word and God the Father were face to face. They were in agreement. They were standing there together. And in that agreement, in that face-to-face, -face, in that moment where there's consensus and, and love, from that, creation was born. And the Word created everything that came into being, all in line with God the Father. And in that creation, whenever there's creation, whenever there's light, well, then there's also darkness. Darkness. And the darkness tries to, to, in any kind of relationship, tries to overtake the light. But in that relationship, the light would not let the darkness overcome it. The light is, is greater 
than the darkness. It's so beautiful that in this relationship between God the Father and the Son, in this, in this relationship with, that causes a creation to occur where there's light and there's darkness, in this relationship, of course, there's this struggle where the darkness is trying to overcome it, but it can't because the light is greater than the darkness. I can't help but, but anyone who's been married understands this, that when you're dating and you're in a relationship, and things are going well, and, and you're up bubbly, and, and all this life is starting to happen in, in your relationship, and then suddenly something happens, you know, and you get your first bite, and you don't know how you're going to recover. And somehow, in the relationships at last, you, you, you find a way, because your relationship is greater than the struggle. And what John is saying in this prologue is that, is that light, God's light, is greater than any darkness at all. The darkness cannot overcome it. It cannot grasp it. It cannot seize it. It cannot win. The light is greater than the darkness. And yet in this relationship, more happens. This relationship causes children to occur. Listen to verse 12. Yet to all who receive him, the word Jesus, to those who believe in Jesus' name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or of a husband's will, but born of God. Listen to that language. That language is what makes us children of God. It's not by your effort. It's not by your ethnicity. It's not by your works. What makes you a child of God is somehow that relationship between Jesus and the Father. Together, their relationship, a relationship that's filled with life, that creates, has, they hatched up a plan to save this world, to save the children who are in darkness. And in this plan, the meeting of minds, this plan would mean that the word would become flesh and he would dwell among us and that he would be born and that he would live and he would conquer the grave. In this meeting of the mind, that's what he's going to do to make us children of God. Do you see how this language of relationship, this language is, is, provides a gift for all of us? Because you can't earn your, enough to make yourself a child of God. It's not something you earn. It's not something that you do. You can't make it. You can't, it's not by, based on your, your heritage or your ethnicity or your wealth or any of those things or your gender. It's based on a meeting of minds and a relationship. And from that, Jesus came to this earth. The only thing that we can do is trust it to both believe in it. Now you might go, well, oh, that's a work. You're, you, you're making faith a work. It's like, no, no, no. Faith's a gift. Even that's a gift from God. But it's more than that. The reason faith is so important is because all relationships require faith. It requires you believing in the other person, trusting the other person. When my grandpa and grandma, when my grandma looked face to face with my grandpa and he was pleading to live a life with her sharing his love at some point she had to look and say is this someone i trust is this someone whose love is is enough for me to leave all the comforts of what i know in order to go on this adventure and it was and their union then created a whole life I'm here because of them, so good job, Grandpa. <laughs> but that's what love does. That's what relationship's about. That's what faith is. When you have faith in the other, that the other promises to deliver us. And that's what makes us children of God, is that God has made it. He's claimed it. He said, you're my child. And what we do is we trust it. We claim it. We hold on to it. We let those words shape us. And this is important because as we go through this world and life and the life of faith, it gets hard. <laughs> and there's these moments when we, we trust other words. We think, oh, I'm too dirty for God to, to clean me. And to which Jesus says, I'll wash you, I promise. 
where we say, but I don't have the right clothes. I don't have the wedding dress to which Jesus says, I'll cover you. But I have a bad reputation. And Jesus says, when you're married to me, I give you the best reputation. But I'm undernourished to which Jesus says, I'll feed you. But I'm poor. I'm poor in my good works. I'm poor in my righteousness. I'm poor physically. I'm poor spiritually to which Jesus says, ah, but I'm rich. I'll give you the all. That's the relationship. The meeting of minds between God and Jesus hatched out a plan so that Jesus would come to us and says, here's the gift. It's me. I'm for you. And this gift is going to produce a new life, a great life. And it's going to make you a child of God. And that's the good news in 2021. Is last year was hard. But guess what? Jesus was with you. And last year was a year that we didn't want, but Jesus got you through it. And in this year, as we travel forward, the good news isn't just the vaccine. The good news isn't just that you might get a job. Uh, The good news isn't that your bank account might, might grow. The good news is the same news that you had last year and the year before, that Jesus Christ is crazy about you, and that God the Father and Jesus had a meeting in their minds, and that meeting was to save you to love you, to to make you everything. And that hasn't changed in this new year. And so instead, let us live in this truth. Let us love in this truth. Let us grow in this truth. And let us truly enjoy the, the reality that we are children of God, that you are children of God, a child of God, and that God has a relationship with you a relationship that will carry you through the grave all the way to eternity. So rejoice and be glad. Happy New Year. In Jesus' name, amen. Long time ago in Bethlehem, so the Holy Bible say, Mary's boy child, Jesus Christ, was born on Christmas Day. While shepherds watched their flocks by night, they saw a bright new shining star and heard a choir from heaven sing. The music came from afar. Hark now, hear the angels sing, a new king's born today. And we will live forevermore because of Christmas Day. Now Joseph and his wife Mary came to Bethlehem that night. They found no room to bear her child, not a single room was inside. By and by they found a little nook in a stable all forlorn. And in a manger cold and dark, Mary's little boy child was born. Trumpets sound and angels sing, listen to what they say, that we will live forevermore because of Christmas Day. Hark now, hear the angels sing, a new king's born today, and we will live forevermore because of Christmas Day. Please join me in reciting the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, our Redeemer, you created light 
that we might live, and you illumined our world with the light of your beloved Son. By your Spirit, comfort us in all darkness, and turn us to your Son, Jesus Christ, who is the light of the world. We pray this for ourselves, our loved ones, our community, our nation, and our world. Oh Lord, we ask that you would let this year be filled with all your goodness and that you would open us up to you who are good. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive now the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. You are free in Christ. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Happy New Year. Amen.